So Alex introduced the idea of uh, having a rich metadata set, and I'm going to talk more about the tools and the framework that we've created across the project for taking some of that metadata and use it, using it. So we often talk about object-based audio as being format agnostic. So uh, by the virtue of having some audio objects and some metadata that describe them, we can reproduce in either of the two environments seen here. Uh, the problem is that, uh, uh, say you have an audio object that's meant to come from behind the listener, well, it's fine to reproduce that physically in the, uh, in the high loudspeaker count system, but it's still not possible to do that uh, correctly in the low channel count system. Uh, so maybe if we can't exactly reproduce the intended experience, we want to use some of the rich metadata that Alex talked about to get closer to the experience that the producer wanted to create or, or the emotion they wanted to create in the listener or maybe uh, introduce some personal preferences uh, of the listener as well. And so by having this uh, really rich set of metadata that can come from different places and be maybe more detailed than the standard core metadata, we can step towards doing that. Um, so on this slide, I've got a diagram of a very standard object-based uh, pathway. So we have our audio objects and metadata that are passed through to the renderer. And because the renderer knows about where the loudspeakers are through the configuration, uh, it can generate uh, loudspeaker signals as appropriate. And what we've uh, introduced is a slightly more complex pipeline for metadata adaptation, uh, where we can uh, augment the core metadata with some more detailed semantic metadata that maybe describes the audio object, but also the listener, the room, uh, the loudspeaker setup in a bit more detail. And then uh, a tool for doing metadata adaptation. So you can see here that the audio is just passed through to the renderer, as in a standard system. But the metadata is intercepted at the adaptation stage and processed in some way. And that, can, that processing can be based on uh, the, the detailed metadata. It can be based on existing rules or knowledge, maybe coming out of perceptual experiments. Or it can be based on metering of the scene. So that's a kind of feedback loop where what's coming out of the loudspeakers can be used to inform how the metadata is changed. And so we can optimize or personalize the listening experience uh, just based on changing the metadata rather than the audio signals. And so to, uh, to implement this, Andreas Frank at Southampton University developed a piece of software called the Metadapter. Um, and that do does the processing uh, through having uh, a bunch of processes that can be uh, defined through a configuration file. Um, this is a, a Python piece of Python software that allows uh, researchers to really quickly write simple code to prototype different metadata processing. Um, and it can take inputs as uh, control messages uh, from external software. So I'm going to just very quickly talk through a simple example of metadata adaptation and show how we'd implement that in the framework. So we've got two things here. We've got um, a set of audio objects and some metadata that has the core metadata-like position, but also some semantic metadata, in this case a very simple description of whether something's speech or music. And the application here is the user setting the playback level of speech in the reproduction. So we have a simple user interface element where the user can set speech level. So the first block of the Python software is a function for taking some input. And we simply have to define a key input, so a label set speech level here. And so anything that the metadata, uh, the metadapter gets passed with this uh, input key uh, will be uh, taken as the speech level. So it's a simple OSC message with the key field set speech level and the target value, in this case, three decibels. And the next component of that system is the uh, adaptation loop. The function is called process object vector. And all we do is simply repeatedly run through the objects or the metadata for each object, uh, look in the advanced metadata and find out the object type. And if we match the speech object type, then just quickly change the object level to the target speech level. Um, and I, I hope you can see here how this is immensely powerful. Um, we can really quickly build up much more complex adaptation features than this um, and kind of prototype personalization or adaptation fields taking in data from a variety of different places uh, or sources. So it's an incredibly useful way of being able to quite quickly prototype uh, personalization or adaptation um, through metadata. So we've written a couple of papers about this and the framework was used throughout the project and we'll hear more about it, I'm sure, in various talks throughout today.